6,590 pounds, the fan favorite Freedom Express 292 BHDS, back and better than ever for another season here at Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This gives us a private rear bunkhouse. We are extra tall. We have Asdell. We have an amazing outside kitchen. And shown today in the Liberty Edition trim package upgrade. When the slide out is closed, you can get to your seating, you can get to the master bed, you can get to your refrigerator. You know, if you need to stop and, you know, whip up a quick meal for the kids, you're good. If you need to use the bathroom and the bunkhouse, though, you know, kind of, I guess you call it out of the wrapper, it's not going to work. But if you just nudge this slide out only a couple inches, which on a slide system like this, this is a rack and pinion slide. If you don't put it all the way in or out, it's okay. It doesn't hurt the slide. It is advisable that you don't put it halfway out like this and then jump up and down in the slide box itself. It would probably be okay. It's just not advisable. But that can give you just enough room to crack that door open and give you just enough room to get back to the bunkhouse. However, if it is raining outside and you make a little travel stop, you do not want to leave the slide partially open. You want to either all the way open or all the way closed because while it's halfway in or out, there are little gaps in the seals as the slide wiper seals kind of wipe their way in or out that haven't taken place yet. I've actually received a fair amount of, uh, you know, underhanded criticism from a couple of the other brands that we represent here at Halo RV because they say that I speak uh, unfairly complimentary regarding our Freedom Express RVs. Well, I think it's because they're doing the things that really matter. Like, if I went, like, as a person who goes camping, I see what they're doing here, and it makes sense. They're not just building an RV that looks pretty. It looks pretty, and it works. It's fashion and function blended together. And one of those areas is the taller interior ceiling. This has a 6 foot 9 sidewall with a linear interior ceiling. That as compared to a conventional 6 and a half foot wall with or without a ceiling vault. Now, the vaults are nice. But a taller slide or sidewall means a taller slide out. It means a generally bigger, more open feeling. It means larger cabinets, more headroom in the shower, more room in the bunks. And then to make it an even better, big person friendly bunkhouse, you'll find when we get up front, this also has a residential queen bed, not a short camp queen. So there's a lot of things they've done here to make it look and feel and function better. But again, with things like their Asdell construction, we'll talk more about, uh, actually, you know, let's just talk about that now. Underneath the sidewall fiberglass, there's a material called Asdell in play. It's a Luon wood substitute, and long story short, it makes the RV lighter. Uh, it makes it a little more sound resistant, so it's quieter in here. Like, there's actually a lot of tractor noise outside right now. I don't know if you're picking up on the camera. Um, it, uh, it also, the material itself can't rot, mold, or mildew. It's an awesome, awesome thing. It's not less expensive, though. That's why not everybody uses it. So, uh, you know, we have Asdell. We're taller, bigger beds, etc. We're big person friendly, but we're still lightweight. We also have an extra long slide out right here. To get a full trifold sleeper sofa and a full true U-dinette that's like seven foot long or so, well, you have to have a really long slide wall. And that's why some manufacturers have a similar looking floor plan that for some reason is lighter or less money and you can't quite put your finger on it. Well, it's because it's probably not quite as big. Well, um, now, one of the things that you're going to see me talk about several times here is storage. And if there's something that I think that Coachman just as a whole understands better than almost anyone else, it is definitely storage. All Freedom Express dinettes will have easy access storage on them. Normally, there would just be a bench end door on there. But one of the nice Liberty features that you enjoy is you have full extension ball bearing glide drawers. So you don't have to ever lift the cushions or the decking to get to the storage. Now, even with a cabinet door on the end of it, that's still true. But what about the back bench? And that's one of those little details I love about Freedom Express. This is the kind of stuff that makes, it just drives you crazy long term in an RV that you won't get annoyed on. By virtue of the fact that they have this fully free floating table right here. You can get the table up out of the way. You can fold it down into a sleeper. We'll see that later. I would say you could take it outside for picnic time, but Freedom Express includes their own outdoor picnic table. But if you look below that, you see how the back bench actually has sliding panels. So you have drawers that bring all the storage to you, the table gets out of the way, and you still never have to lift up the cushions and the decking to get to anything. Now, both bench ends do have full extension drawers. I just popped that one very briefly to sort of give you the idea over here. But you might notice there's some areas like below the sofa, above the entertainment, below the dinette ends, there's some indirect accent lighting. And that looks neat during the day. It's eye candy, but at night, 
it's a perfect little nightlight so that if, uh, you know, the little kids back there in the bunks need to be able to find their way to the bathroom or something like that, or if, if you hear them crying for some reason, you could wake up at night and you could get back there without having to blind yourself with the really aggressive lighting package they have. Plus, you see over here, we've got a, a very nice pantry space. Um, the uh, big, biggest hiccup here is it just has to be kind of a couple steps away from the refrigerator because they put a little bit bigger bathroom in this thing. Now, uh, while we are over here, a couple things I want to point out. I've got that drawer in the way. That's not really helping me. But you may notice how there are no floor uh, heating vents in a Freedom Express. They actually don't do that in their, uh, their sister cousin, whatever you want to call it. Hopefully not an actual sister cousin, but the Coachman Apex Ultralight. Um, Liberty Editions have a standard 8 cubic foot fridge freezer, whereas that would have been an optional upgraded piece of equipment in an ultralight. That's one of those differences there. And you will always have the option of upgrading to a 15,000 BTU air conditioner, which here uh, at Halet RV, we do on basically any and every Freedom Express across the board because it basically costs pennies in the mix, but it gives you a significantly more powerful air conditioner that you'll never regret. You'll never regret having more power versus less. So uh, over here in the uh, bathroom area, like I said, they made the bathroom a little bit bigger, which is why they had to move the pantry but it works. It works well. You've got a uh, porcelain foot flush stool and, you know, no, no floor vents by it. So if you've got a little boy that misses sometime, you, you know, you're not going to have to worry about cleaning that out. They also have these larger paddle style switches, which are just, it's easier if you're, you're just walking in here blind and you're just reaching around the corner. You can find that thing more easily. It's also easier for kids. Handy little towel drying rack, but the little shelves make it perfect, either if you want to just decorate or if you want to keep some extra body washes kind of up there, something like that. A full mirrored, uh, you know, medicine cabinet vanity. And something that we'll talk about as we go through, at the very least, you will find every single countertop or tabletop in a Freedom Express has a sealed edge press membrane. And they've been doing that longer than almost anyone else. Like, that's become a more and more common thing. Freedom Express has been doing it for, for years, you know, longer than everybody else. Plus that extra shelf over there for extra, like, toilet paper, that's handy. Um, remember, taller ceiling means taller shower. So a guy like me, if you're over six foot, you can actually stand inside of here without having to have your head in the bubble. Plus, we've got a full skylight and shower surround paneling, which never seems to offend anybody either. Uh, moving back here into the bunk room, once again, they've done just a great job with storage. What I like here is how they gave you this open shelving on the side. That's under what I call a big kid bunk. The bunk is a little bit wider, so it's taller for one of the big kids because they can kind of sleep corner to corner on that. But most people are side sleepers anyway. It's a 74-inch long bunk. It'll typically fit most people. I want to draw your attention, though, to the windows. They spent a lot of time, effort, and money dressing up this bunkhouse. Uh, there are windows all around this thing. You have USB plugs here for the kiddos sort of devices and whatnot. All of these windows open for airflow. They all have uh, blackout roller nightshades as opposed to like pleated shades or metal blinds that are very easily snagged and kicked or banged up by the kiddos. We've got TV hookups on the rear wall here. We've also got a big storage closet right below that. And as we peek inside this cabinet, couple things. We've got, uh, now Freedom Expresses have hidden hinges. They help the cabinet doors stay open or closed. So like right now, this trailer is super not level. Actually, it's leaning toward the slide side pretty badly because of where it's parked on the lot, not because of a Freedom Express problem. But these doors, they're holding themselves open. You know, it wants to close, but that hinge won't let it. Alternatively, if you do close it, it wants to stay there in transit. It doesn't want to flop open. And instead of just having a big wasted open cavity, that shelving there, it is worth its weight in gold. If you really want to fold up and pile up all the kids' stuff, another thing I thought about is you could have little like sliding cube organizers in there and each kid could sort of have their own thing. But you know, double windows for the top, still a window below, plenty of lighting in this bunkhouse as well. Like I said, this is a very well-treated bunk room and that's something that not every brand can say. A very easily missed and underappreciated feature of this floor plan, though, is that it's it's a bunkhouse. Sure, it can sleep a ton of people, but it's good for more than just the kids. Remember how I kept saying that this is like a big person-friendly uh, bunkhouse model? That's kind of what I meant. Like right here, we've got a true U-Dinette. It's like seven foot long. It's, it's nearly four feet wide. 
It would be a little tight for two people. You could make it work if you had to. You've also got a full trifold sleeper sofa over there. That can sleep two adults for sure. Now, if you're tall like me, your feet might hang off the end a little bit, but for a quick camping weekend, or if you're just not tall like me, it'll definitely get the job done. Another uh, easily missed Liberty feature, because it's kind of an out of sight, out of mind thing, is that here in the slide out, or well, actually through the entire RV, we do have blackout slow rise roller shades. But they really kind of, they overdid here, and, and I mean that in the best way possible. If you notice, these things open way down past the window line so that you don't have that extra light kind of bleeding through and stabbing in the eyeballs in the morning. And you can see how up front here at the master bedroom, we do have sliding pocket privacy doors, not curtains. So you do have a hard line separating all of these different sleeping areas. Alternatively, you could convert this into something like a big wide open lounge, just kind of come in, kick back, stretch out, relax. And you could use that table when it folds down like this is the normal sleeper position, but there's nothing that says it couldn't be a coffee table. And there's, if you bump it right up against the slide base like that, it gives you the perfect amount of space to scoot around that, lean forward, sit down and drink, maybe play a board game with the kids or something like that. They can be sprawled out here on the floor. You can be leaning back in your comfy chair, you know. There's, there's just a lot of different flexibility on this. So it's not just a good sleeper, you know. It's a good daytime function RV as well. Um, the uh, TV can obviously spin around. Uh, well, I don't know if that was obvious, but it, it is now by virtue of the fact that I just blurted that out there. What's a little less obvious is right below that, you see these open pockets. Part of the reason they are there is because this is a handy little like device charging shelf. So, you know, if kids have their own little phones or music players or something like that, there's a great little spot there where you can kind of keep an eye on what devices are where, what's charged up. Liberty Edition does give us that electric space heating fireplace right there. It does come with a remote control so that, you know, you can just kind of be kicked back and extra heat without burning up your propane, guys. But you don't have to use it for that. If it's squelching hot outside, um, you can just turn on the LED lights and just have a cool little kind of light show. And I am a sucker for an entry area shoe garage. Cuts the clutter, keeps the camper cleaner. Now, I mentioned the uh, sealed edge countertops. In a Liberty Edition, your kitchen will benefit from a solid surface counter, and you can see that it's also going to get a matching flush mount sink cover. And this is one of those easy to miss details and why I like to put these videos together. Freedom Express's kitchen counters are deeper, and there's an easy place I can show you. If you look behind that stove top, do you see how much space is hanging out behind the stove, behind the sink? That's because their countertops are deeper. That means more area, more prep space. And a quick little note here, I think I've made the mistake of saying this before, but people see these and they say, oh, knife slots. And I know that some people do use it that way. The true intention of this is to be a bit of a ventilation system off the back of the stove, although it does look like it does have a built-in vent here. It's just, it's one of those things that I see people stick knives and stuff down in there. You need to be a little bit careful about that. Don't go too nuts on things. Small knives are going to work better than big ones here. So, uh, then just the dumbest little things. It's the little touches that send me over the top on these. That's why I like Freedom Expresses, personally. The little anchor to tie up your string shade here for the kitchen, because the kitchens have to have metallic mini blinds for fire code. You can't have like a flammable cloth right there. That's a classic thing that I swear it's like almost nobody does nowadays, but you know, Coachman's still doing it because I, I don't know, I don't wanna say they care more, but maybe they care more? <laughs> now down below here, this is where that deeper countertop starts to come into play. It gives you bigger drawers that extend further. You see, you've got a just a dedicated drawer, then you have one of my favorite things. You've got the sink around utensil drawer. And you have to say it like that, It's the law, guys. It's kind of like how you can't tear tags off of a mattress you don't own because the pillow police might come and get you. But what's cool is how this wraps around the sink, but it's not just a stupid wasted sponge drawer. Those sponge drawers are not good for much, and I swear every time you flip that drawer closed, the sponge falls inside the cabinet anyway. It'd be better if it wasn't even there half the time. But this, you want to take this insert out, you want to go set it over on the table. You can set, you know, like your condiments inside the little U area right there. It's super functional. And on this floor plan, I'd say you could take it outside, but you don't need to because the outside camp kitchen has one of its own. Plus down below, we've got some big, deep 
uh, shelf space. So you got big pots, pans, you got trays, you want to do some biscuits or cookies, you want an extra place for dish soap or whatnot, you got all kinds of room for it. Even the entertainment center gets in on the act a little bit over there. Now remember, taller ceiling means that we do have three inch taller cabinets. Not only do we have those uh, nice sleek looking hidden hinges, but this is all pocket screwed cabinetry. It's not stapled particle board type stuff. And there's one of those little entertainment accent lights I was telling you about earlier. Now sliding up past the privacy doors here, I want to start up top in the bedroom because the Liberty Edition Freedom Expresses now include a really awesome feature. Instead of needing to spend a bunch of money to upgrade this ceiling vent to a power ceiling vent fan, the Freedom Express Liberty Editions just come with it now. And what's cool is it comes with a remote control because if you look at where this is located, it's directly above the 60 by 80 residential queen bed. Not the short camp queen, but a bigger, longer queen. Well, I don't think you want to climb up and down on the bed and wake each other up to use that thing. So it comes with a remote control. You can have it laying on the, the bedside stand. You can just reach up here at night. You can turn that thing on off. It has a power raise and lower roof lid. So it's it's basically, it's, it's totally hands-free. You just use that little uh, remote control and you can have great airflow pouring in through these dual side breeze windows here. Now both sides of the RV uh, have a full hanging wardrobe closet. Full storage cabinet, not just a shelf above, but then we've got that beautiful front windshield that we have here. A lot of brands have inc started including these, but on a enclosed bedroom like this, it really helps the whole room look and feel bigger. As I mentioned, this is a 60 by 80 residential queen. So, uh, you know, some people say, oh man, the bed goes right up to the doors here. No big deal. Remember, because it is a longer queen, you're not going to have a problem of kicking those doors at night. Plus, both sides of the bed have both household and USB plugs so that, uh, you know, no matter what side of the bed you're sleeping on, your CPAP, your heated blanket friendly, your phone charger friendly, you're just good to go. And don't forget, when you're just chilling in the bed in the evening, that TV can spin around so you can, uh, you know, enjoy a little bit of uh, evening entertainment here. Just mom and dad maybe catching up on the news or just watching something that doesn't include SpongeBob SquarePants. And while I, I really enjoyed, I certainly did not dislike the exterior on the previous generation of Freedom Expresses, I really like what they have going on now. That windshield is just so much eye candy. I absolutely love looking at that thing. And obviously with that privacy shade inside, you're not gonna, you know, enjoy any kind of, you know, neighbors peeking at you, unless I guess you're into that sort of thing. Another thing that's uh, different here on the Liberty Edition from the standard Freedom Express Ultralight would be the uh, full power jack system that they have on here. And what I love is how easy they made to operate it. You never have to like bend over to mess with any of the jacks. It's all controlled right up here on this handy little like hideaway panel with its own little lock. But what you can't see from just this video is how fast these things work. They're actually using a very nice jack system, especially the tongue jack. It moves up and down very quickly. So when you're hooking up like your weight distribution system and whatnot, you're spending less time standing there holding the button. You're spending more time either getting on the road or getting to your campsite and getting unhooked. You know, it's less nonsense. So that's a, you know, aggressive power tongue jack and four corner power stabilizer jacks. Everything on this is push button simple, whether it's corner jacks, tongue jack, awning, everything. You might have noticed up front, there's that little red dot up there. This does have a battery disconnect switch now, which is very, very cool. They started doing that very late last season. You will also notice here on a Liberty Edition, uh, we have not just magnet holdbacks, we have not just enclosed hinges, but we are also getting the nicer metal slam latches down here as opposed to a less expensive plastic latch. So that's not going to like fall apart from sun exposure. So down here you can quickly see the uh, power corner jack, so there's not much to look at there. What I do want to point out though is the fact that we do have an enclosed and heated underbelly, so this will be good for some extended season use. And if I seem like I'm rushing through this a little bit more than normal, apologies. We've got some pretty severe storms about to roll in here, and I don't want to be outside with a camera in my hand and an umbrella above my head when that happens. I'm sure you can understand why. So while we're back here, count up the windows. Now, remember in the bunkhouse I was saying how there's just there's windows everywhere. Every bunk has at least one, if not two, windows. And then you've got windows on the sl uh, slide sides. Every one of these things all opens for airflow and they are all heavily tinted to keep the nosy neighbors and the hot sun out. One other thing, well actually two other things while I'm over here, a couple things. We've got a really, really, really rough textured slide wall and then they do something a little bit different here. 
They use a, like, uh, there's a lip on this. It's actually a T-wiper seal. And what that's doing is, uh, in conjunction with this gripping slide wall here, it makes sure that slide seal gets wiped all the way in or out. Because if it got, like, crimped halfway like this, well, then there's a little bead where water could penetrate through. You're not going to have that happen here. Black tank flush, sewer hookup, all of our hookups, all in one corner back here so that you don't have to have hoses and extensions and stuff strung all over your campsite because typically if you're going to be park camping your hookups are back in this rear corner before the inclusion of an outside kitchen this actually used to be a second full pass-through that ran under the bunks now it runs all the way up to that uh, outside kitchen but it's still an awesome bonus exterior storage space that also still has a magnet hold back on it so even back here in what you consider an off door it's everything, all your doors outside basically, if they're not self-strutted, they have magnet holdbacks. We're backup camera ready. We're gonna climb up on that roof in just a minute. She is fully walkable. You see the uh, ladder there. The ladder is an optional piece of equipment that we have added to this Freedom Express. That is never standard on any Freedom Express. We put ladders on every single Freedom Express that we build and spec out across the board here at Halo RV. You, maybe you, you'll never use it, I don't know, but even if you use it once, it's worth it, guys. It's just so much easier to get up and down there. And I like what they did with the awning and the outside kitchen door here. Because we have a large outside kitchen, that door is acting like a, uh, a shield itself. And you notice how the awning arm goes right up to that thing. So whether, you, you know, if you come outside and then you duck under the outside kitchen door, you're basically always under coverage. So they really maximize the patio coverage on this thing here. And they do one of, I think, the best outside kitchens that is available on the market today. So, a couple things. Here's various, you know, why do I say that? Why do I feel that? You know, because I look at just so many hundreds, thousands of RVs in a year. Why do I think this is a good outside kitchen? That refrigerator is mounted down low so that the kids can actually get to it. But it's still a big refrigerator, so you have more drink space. So depending on the, you know, the refrigerator that you have equipped on the, on the inside of the RV, you could have anywhere from 12 cubic foot and up of cold storage capacity. Very, very cool. Um, the uh, little spice rack, the extra little storage they have up there, they just made sure they didn't waste any opportunity for anything. I love the fact that they also have a very functional cabinet out here. You know, they, again, didn't waste opportunities. You have outlets for either phone chargers or you have a nice spot there if you want to run a, uh, a blender or something like that. Frankly, there's nothing really stopping you from twisting that out of the way. You could put a griddle right over to the top of that sink and you're good to go. And how about the fact that we have a real sink with a real drain into a holding tank? Doesn't just dribble onto the ground. We have another of the utensil drawers with these handy little, you know, removable inserts. So you can really have your outdoor stuff, your indoor stuff, and you can keep them separated. And having the extra room for those utensils is awesome. We also have a fully free-floating Coleman camp grill over here, and what I like about this is it's a far higher output. And what that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that if it's a little bit breezy outside, uh, those little two-burner stovetops, it's like blowing out a set of birthday candles. They get blown out, the flames get blown out super easy, but not these. They're windshielded, and they have a higher propane output, so if it is gusty, it has to be like 25 mile an hour gusts, probably to the point that you're not gonna wanna be cooking outside anyway. So this is very half ton towable. Obviously every half ton can be a little different, but a general tow package half ton will handle this one. It is a little bit long though, and that is where the wide stance stability axles come into place. These are set about 14 inches apart. And what that does is it keeps the trailer from swinging as much and bouncing as much. It's not a replacement for a proper weight distribution system. It is a supplement thereunto, which is a word that I don't get to use very often. We do have outside TV hookups. You could, in theory, uh, put a bracket against the wall right there. They do laminate into the wall galvanized steel backer to screw into, but I think what most people are going to do is utilize that portable picnic table that's up in the pass-through storage that we just haven't seen quite yet to put the table or a TV out here when and if you want it. Now, some Freedom Express models give you the ability to put this grill on as an option, and it would actually slide open sort of like that, like a drawer. But since this already has a full camp kitchen, they didn't need a second grill. So they said, you know, we already have a space jigged into the wall. Why not just put a huge drawer into this thing? And if you notice, it actually slides right under the refrigerator. So it's inside of the RV, it would be down at like the level of your toes. 
and you don't want to get on your hands and knees to dig into something. So they made it open outside where that's that's super, super useful. It's really smart what they did there. For coming and going, we got that bigger entry handle. And we, uh, on the Liberty Editions, have the LCI, well, actually on the Ultralights now as well. Freedom Expresses, generally speaking, have the LCI stable step right here. And on a big rig like this, they do put a triple step on with those adjustable foot pegs to marry up to about any campsite. What's cool about this one is it does give you that larger top plank, which can kind of act like a seat at your campsite. It just gives you a little more foot room if you're juggling keys when you're up there. Um, the uh, other thing I like about this is that it does hang down a little bit lower, so you don't have to have those foot pegs dead level. You know, those planks don't have to be dead level, and you won't run the risk of kind of goobering up the bottom of your entry door. And how about this little pet-friendly doodad? You have yourself out here a little leash holder, but it also doubles as a barley pop opener if you've got yourself your, uh, you know, drink of choice made with hops and barley and whatever flavorings you prefer. It actually pops open right there, and here you can tie the old doggo up. I guess you could tie the cat up or an unruly husband, or a wild kid. I don't know, sky's the limit, it's your choice. We, oh, we got raindrops coming. We have a simple side mount solar prep panel plug right here, and you can see that you've got tons of room within this pass-through compartment to put panels like that. Now, you can see in here you've got a, uh, a lot of aluminum skeletal structure going on, and then you've got that two foot by four foot portable picnic table that I mentioned. Very, very handy so that you know, you don't have to lug around extra cargo. You get to enjoy all 42 cubic foot of this front storage compartment, which is absolutely massive. Now, I don't have any power on the RV currently. I had to conserve some battery power. But kind of like there's a full light under the awning, you have a full light that runs the length of this pass-through. So whether you're on this side or that side, you can see what you're doing in there. And it's that kind of detail orientation that I really, really have learned to love and appreciate off these Freedom Expresses. They're not built to sell they're built to use and that's such a crucial difference we've got a couple more neat whiz bangs and doodads up here to talk about on the roof first the fact that it is fully walkable we've got 3 8 uh, roof decking 16 inch on center roof studs which is pretty much the standard for walkability um, they've got attic vents which is what this little hockey puck looking thing is right here so, something like that in conjunction with the white roof membrane will organically help keep a ton of sun out of this RV. But we like to typically take that a step further on the Liberty Edition Freedom Expresses here at Halo RV. We will typically outfit these with the Radiant Barrier Upgrade. And if you're not familiar with what that is, basically um, there's a, a foil type layer that starts at the nose, wraps all the way up the nose, along the entire length of the roof, and down the rear wall. It goes to those specific areas because these are the areas that receive the greatest exposure from the sun when you are using the RV. So that, in conjunction with the roof fence and the white roof skin, means this thing is going to be a very comfortable, hot climate camper. Now, Freedom Express had been pretty good that way for a couple years, but when they went away from the tan skin now to the white, it is basically just even better. And it's interesting how RVs used to be white, and then they started picking up these wild color packages, and now they're back to white again. Everything is cyclical, isn't it? Kind of like music, you know? Fashion trends. Everything. Everything is, you know, what was old is new again. Whatever was cool for your grandparents is cool for the grandkids, I think. It skips a generation. Also up here, we've got the WineGuard Air 360 uh, antenna system. Long story short, that big black bucket looking thing is your TV antenna. You don't have to crank the thing up and down. There's no worry of accidentally hanging it off the side of the RV or, uh, you know, having it, uh, forgetting that it's up and having a tree branch catch it or a power line on the way out. It's just simpler, easier, get there, scan your channels, you're done. There's no twisting, turning, no nonsense. Just go camping. And isn't that the point. Isn't that the idea behind every single one of these things? The idea is to go out, relax, kick back, have a good time. And that's part of the reason that we don't do hidden dealer fees here at Halet RV. We, you know, uh, hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer, package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between, we do that, but we don't add extra for like getting the RV shipped here, getting it cleaned, uh, you know, filling up your propane tanks, putting a battery on it, water and electric surge protectors, showing you how the RV works. That is all part of the price tag here at Halet RV. Basically just add taxes and tags. And the only reason I don't include that is just because I never know what state our next buyer is coming from. And depending on what state you're from, your taxes and your plates could be different. So if that sounds good, if simple, fun, easy, and effective are what you're looking for, 
then welcome to Halid RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.